Hello friends and welcome back to the 14th part of the series where we will be creating an Instagram clone in Flutterflow and Superbase. So in this video, we will be seeing how we can implement a search post function to allow our users to search for posts in our search page over here. So the user should be able to type in something in the search bar over here and a bunch of posts with the results should be reflected in this grid over here. So let's see how we can do that right now. All right, so first things first, let's go and navigate to our search page. All right, so inside the search page, I want you to first go to the root search page. And over here, I want you to open the action flow editor. And on the on page load event, we want to add a new action. And now we'll type in super base and we'll choose this new action called super base query rows. So this is another one of the ways we can actually get data from our super base tables through this query rows action over here. In our prior videos, I taught you how to get data from our super base tables directly inside the list view widget itself. But this is another way we can read data from our super base tables by having this backend call query rows action when our page loads so that we are able to access the data throughout the whole page instead of being limited to the widget itself. All right, so once we have this query row action, we want to select the table that we want to query. For this, we can just select full post view. And for the filters, we'll just leave it as nothing for now, as well as the ordering. But for the action output variable name, we want to give the variable name, we can just give it results. Now we can close out of our action flow editor. And now let's add the actual simple search functionality to our text field over here. So we click on this search bar text view and we want to go ahead and open the action flow editor. For the action trigger, we want to select the on submit event and we want to add a new action and we'll search for simple search. We want to choose this action over here. For the search type, it will be searching strings. And now in this field over here, we have to give a list of search options. So we click on that and we click on action outputs and we want to choose our result super base row. But since this is a super base row and not a list of strings, we have to click on the available options over here and we want to map list items. So this basically just gets one of the fields in our super base rows. We want to click on this and here we can choose the super base row field that we want to get. And we want to search by the posts description. So we click on confirm and no further changes. And we'll just leave it as no further changes. And then we can confirm over here. And now for the search term, this will just be what the user inputs inside the search bar. So we can click on this and we can click on widget state. And you can choose the text field search for anything option here. All right, so yeah, that's basically it for our search function Flutterflow. So we can close out of this. And now we want to reflect the search results in our grid view over here. So we have to click on the grid view, make sure that the grid view widget is selected. And we'll choose this generate dynamic children option. So here we can give it a name such as search results. And for the value over here, we have to set this value. However, we cannot just simply set it to our simple search results as this is just giving us the description of our post. Instead, we have to use our description to match it to the super base rows for that post, their corresponding posts. So how we can do this is we can instead select action output and we can select results. And instead of this, we want to only get the items. So filter list items. And here now we can specify a filter condition. So for this condition, we want to set it as our simple search results. And under the available options over here, we can select list contains item. So if our search results list contains our item in list, for the super base row field, we want to choose the description field over here. So basically what this filter condition does is that it only returns our posts where their description is currently inside 
our search results description list over here. So if you click on confirm, and then we click on save, you can now see that this grid view contains some more transparent containers over here, meaning that this grid view is currently dynamically generating these widgets based on our data. So let me go ahead and delete all of these containers first. So we don't need any of these containers, we just need one. And now inside this container, let's first change the name. So post container. And let's add an image inside this container. And now for this image, we can change this image to our post image. So under the path over here, we want to click on this orange icon. And we want to choose this search results item option. So we click on that. And then for the available options, we want to get row field. And the field that we want to set is our image path field. So we can click on confirm. And in case the path is faulty or there's no path, we can show error image on failure. So that's just a default image that we set in our settings. All right, and that should be it for our search function over here in the search post page. So we can try testing it out and I'll see you when the test mode loads. All right, so test mode is just loaded up and here I have created a bunch more posts with cats over here, very funny cats, as well as happy x -lottles. So you can see that in a lot of these descriptions, there's xlotto, xlotto, xlotto in many of these xlotto descriptions. And there's the cat, cat, cat word in all of the cat posts. So let's try searching now. So in our search page over here, let's search for cat. And you can see that it returns all of the cat posts over here. Now, if we search for xlotto and enter this, you can see that we are given only the axolotl posts. So that's great, our search function is working perfectly. What if we search for funny? Well, we are given these three cat photos and as well as this axolotl photo. If we go and see, you can see that all of the cat posts have funny in the description. So funny, funny, funny. And this axolotl post over here also has the word funny. So our search function is working great. All right, so that wraps it up for this video. In this video, the main concepts that we covered is the simple search flutter flow action, as well as another alternative way to read data from our Superbase tables using the flutter flow query row action. So in the next video, we'll actually be implementing the other part of our search, which is searching for users over here. But I'll be introducing you to an alternative method to implement the simple search function, which is using API calls over here so that you are able to get an idea of what exactly is an API call and how to implement them in your Flutterflow apps. So I hope that you're looking forward to that video and I'll see you in the next video.